organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up tonight on Daily Iowan TV, the battle between the University of Iowa and their former field hockey coach takes a new turn. And Thursday marked a landslide resolution and gender equality among American Jews. Coming up in sports, Iowa football hasn't been on the road in almost 20 days. A road test awaits them, though, as they head to Indiana, where the Hoosiers are looking for their first Big Ten Conference win. All that and more coming up. Daily Iowan TV starts now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Austin Love. And I'm Alara Bartlett. Reports surfaced late Wednesday that the UI's former senior athletics administrator, Jane Meyer, filed a lawsuit against the UI, the Iowa Board of Regents, and the state of Iowa. The lawsuit claims that Meyer was a victim of gender inequality, resulting in lower wages and sexual discrimination at the hands of UI athletic director, Gary Barta. According to her lawyer, Meyer's longtime partner and former UI women's field hockey coach, Tracy Griesbaum, is also expected to file suit for gender discrimination. Meyer was removed from her position in the athletics department, which she held since 2001, a week after writing to Barta detailing discrimination against female officials and student athletes. The UI recognizes Meyer's assignment coincided with the ongoing disagreement with Greasebaum and says Meyer will remain outside the athletic department until the Greasebaum lawsuit is concluded. Janine Beck, the UI spokesperson, said the school neither discriminated nor retaliated against Meyer for the situation with her partner. Last week, Minnesota's head football coach Jerry Kill retired to his ongoing fight with epilepsy. His health has sparked people's curiosity about the disease. Our own Daily Iowa TV's Katie Sextro sat down with both an Iowa City neurologist and a UI student to learn the basics on living with this dangerous condition. Epilepsy is a brain condition that causes a person to have seizures and can be caused by various things. A person can be born with it, it can be genetic, it can develop over the course of time or can be caused by brain injuries, infections, or strokes. It can be diagnosed, it can be treated. Uh, we really focus on quality of life uh, so that people can uh, get back to driving as soon as legally possible and get back to full activities, complete their education. Epilepsy is actually a pretty common disease with about 1% of Iowa's population being diagnosed with it. That's about 30,000 people. Before a diagnosis, a doctor completes an assessment and brainwave tests are also done and that diagnosis can be either generalized or partial epilepsy. A medicine is effective to treat both kinds, but if it doesn't, neurosurgery can also be done to stop those seizures. And that's very comforting for people because those seizures can impact a person's day-to-day -day routine in a huge way, especially for college students. UI junior Brandon Fruta knows firsthand how hard it can be to live with epilepsy as a college student, and after having a seizure that caused a brain injury and short-term memory loss, Studying and even just completing assignments can get pretty difficult. Because of the short-term memory loss, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, I feel like um, a lot of the information I'm learning, um, um, you know, doesn't always get through. Dr. Graner says there are outlets to help students with school dealing with epilepsy. There are offices of student disability services at, uh, at every college and university. I've worked uh, with the office here. And it's, it's often as simple a matter as figuring out what the issue is, what the accommodation needs to be, and then writing a letter as the physician saying, you know, please make this accommodation for this person. And things like that usually work out. Reporting from the Neurology Department and the University of Hospitals and Clinics, this is Katie Sextro, Daily Iowan TV. The UI and Iowa State Bike Program collaboration is another step closer to becoming a reality. The project is looking to get off the ground with a nearly $300,000 budget. The budget comes from money pooled from multiple places, including the UI's Department of Transportation, the City of Iowa City, and even a gift from the Coca-Cola Foundation. The next step is to pick a vendor for the bikes, which will dictate how many bike stations the program can afford to install. 
The project should begin this upcoming spring in time for summer and fall. It's election time, but one local organization is reaching far outside Iowa's borders. Wake Up For Your Rights here in the U.S. is making a difference in the lives of voters in Africa. Daily Iowan TV's Nikki Crossweight has the details. As politics continue to be a topic here in Iowa with the presidential election coming up, one organization in Cedar Rapids is getting involved in elections halfway across the world. S.E. Tongar, a former child soldier in Chad's Civil War, felt it was his moral obligation to pay it forward for all the help he received after moving to the United States. His organization, Wake Up For Your Rights, sent election observers to Benin, Africa last spring to observe the distribution of electoral materials in the final campaigns. African authorities saw Wake Up's efforts as beneficial and is now letting the group contribute ideas. Wake Up is working on projects to help with the transparency of their election process to allow everyone to practice their right to vote. We are working together now on how we can improve the condition of women and uh, the disability people so uh, they can have access, they can uh, play their full rights or, uh, during the vote. And uh, we have been working on, uh, on that project. Wake Up For Your Rights welcomes all immigrants and Americans to join in on their international and local activities to help those in Africa have a voice in politics. In the coming years, the voiceless people will get their voice. I was one of them that uh, lost my voice in Africa, but today I am here in the United States and uh, I get my voice. Wake Up For Your Rights hopes to continue their efforts throughout the future into more countries. Reporting in Cedar Rapids, Nikki Crossway, Daily Iowan TV. Thanks for that, Nikki. And Alara, it has been unseasonably warm uh, for November this past week. You know, it sure has, but I've really been enjoying it. But let's toss it on over to Ashley Kruger, standing by in the weather studio. Hey, Ashley. Not everyone may be looking forward to it, but we are finally getting to that colder weather. Friday morning starts out with clear skies at 42 degrees, and as we go towards midday, we get up to 53 degrees. Then in the evening, temperatures cut back to 41 degrees. Heading into the weekend, we are looking at consistent fall temperatures. The high for Saturday is 49 degrees, and the low is 30 degrees. Sunday remains about the same. Clear skies through the weekend will lead us into the week. Monday and Tuesday continue to have highs in the 50s, and we are looking at a 40% chance rain of rain Wednesday. That's all I have for you here at the Weather Studio. Back to you guys at the desk. The largest group of Jews in the United States, the Union of Reform Judaism, passed a resolution Thursday supporting transgender rights at a conference in Orlando. The URJ voted on a resolution calling for con congregations in summer camps to incorporate and encourage gender neutral bathrooms and language. After the resolution passed, most of the 5,000 people in attendance stood up and cheered. Other U.S. religious groups, including the Episcopal Church, the United Church of Christ, and the Unitarian Universalist Association, have also passed equality resolutions for non-gender conforming people. A group of Hawaiian scientists are working to help preserve the endangered coral reefs in the area. Coral reefs around the globe are suffering from bleaching or the process of reefs, re reefs releasing algae from within, causing a change of color and eventually dying, often caused by warmer water oceans. Ruth Gates, director of the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology, uh, and, her attempt, uh, and her team are attempting to prevent this process through assisted evolution. The group takes coral with stronger genes and places it in water that simulates wa warmer and more acidic oceans. The group hopes that these experiments will help protect the, the coconut island population of coral reefs from global warming. Well, Lara, it might be a little quiet in Iowa City this week. Uh, the team's on the road. Mm -hmm. The Hawks head to Indiana on Saturday, and Taylor Brooks is standing by to give us more on the matchup and a couple of academic recognitions. Taylor? Thanks, Austin and Alara. Two leaders on the field are also being leaders in the classroom. Iowa defensive back Jordan Lomax and defensive end Drew Ott both earned a spot on the Capital One academic All-District 6 first team. This is the second time for Lomax, but the first time for Ott. As for the field, Iowa continues to have a target on their back as they search through their Big Ten schedule at Indiana this weekend. Now, at the beginning of the year, people were skeptical of Iowa's newly looking offensive line when they graduated offensive lineman Andrew Donnell and Brandon Sheriff to the NFL. But this 8-0 team would be nowhere without this 2015 offensive line, and I show you why.
With Iowa ranked second in the Big Ten in rushing offense, the offensive line has showed it can open holes almost anywhere. It just it gives us a good feeling to know that we've got a lot of guys that can play and a lot of guys with experience. It starts at the center. Senior Austin Blythe could be said to be playing at a different level of intensity this year. You know, Austin's a guy uh, from the day he walked in here, he really had a good uh, feel and he's pretty adept at you know, just about every block. So it's just been a matter for him of developing consistency, continuing to develop his strength, which has happened. And uh, well, he's playing at a really high level right now. I think I'm just uh, you know kind of letting it all hang out. Um, last go around, um, kind of puts things puts things into perspective. Um, going into my last season and. Um, you just, I want to go out there and play and have fun. The inside stability can also be credited to Jordan Walsh and Sean Welsh. And all three of the inside guys, be it Austin, Jordan, or Sean, they're all doing a really nice job so far. Then it comes to tackles. With Ike Bodiger out, Cole Croston is taking a heavy load on the outside, but Boone Myers is fully recovered from an injury and is finally getting back in the groove. When I first put the pads on that week, I was Wow, this is different. This feels, this feels foreign, but it felt good to finally get him back and uh, be out there on Saturday with the guys. The offensive line has also got a little help from true freshman James Daniels. Daniels was only the third true freshman to start on the line since 1999. You know, he's still young. He's, he's a very athletic guy, and he's very knowledgeable for his age. He's picked it up really fast. Um, but, you know, I, I try to help them here and there every bit I can. There's another position within this offense that has barely been noticed, but should be. And that would be the fullback duo of Adam Cox and Mick Imploa. Yeah, for the way we play, it's really a bonus when you have uh, an outstanding fullback. And, and we're fortunate we've got two. They're both seniors. Uh, beyond what they do as football players, which is really significant. But uh, beyond that, they're great team leaders, too. And so, so widely respected. And, Part of it's because of their stories. They're both walk-on guys. They're just tough, hard-nosed guys. Played defense, slipped over a couple springs ago. I think it was spring of 13. And you know, ever since then, they've done a lot of good things to help our football team. Indiana will have a challenge on their hands going up against this Iowa offense. But Indiana could cause some trouble for Iowa as well. Katie Reber has more. Heading into Saturday's matchup, the Indiana Hoosers are 0-4 in Big Ten play, while the Iowa Hawkeyes are 4-0. Now leading Iowa's power offense, quarterback C.J. Beathard has just under 1,600 passing yards with nine touchdowns and three interceptions. And Indiana's quarterback Nate Sudfeld has just over 2,000 passing yards with 14 touchdowns and four interceptions. Indiana leads the Big Ten in total offense with 467.6 yards per game and Iowa is right behind them with just over 400 yards per game. Now looking at the defensive side of things, Iowa ranks third in the Big Ten in total defense, allowing just under 300 yards per game. Indiana ranks last in total defense, but have 21 sacks this season and have also allowed the fewest sacks in the Big Ten. The Hawkeyes have 24 sacks, fifth best in the Big Ten, and Iowa leads the conference with 12 interceptions. Now with Indiana's powerful offense and Iowa's dominating defense, this Big Ten showdown will be one to catch. This is Katie Reber, Daily TV Iowan TV Sports. We are out of time on this pregame edition of Daily Iowan TV, but we will see you on game day in Bloomington, Indiana. Austin and Alara, back to you. Thanks, Taylor. Sighs of relief for Arizona State Fairgoers as the missing goat Gus Gus was found on Thursday afternoon after being taken from the State Fair on Wednesday evening. Three-week-old Gus Gus, weighing under five pounds, was in grave danger after he was separated from his mother because he could not be fed properly. Gus Gus belongs to the Great American Petting Zoo. Reports from ABC 15 Arizona state the goat's mother was clearly sad and crying for him to be returned. Nearly 20 hours after Gus Gus's disappearance, the goat was reportedly returned to a local pet smart. Check out this image of him and his mother reunited. That's all we have for you tonight on Daily Iowa TV. Be sure to check out our website, dailyiowan.com, for all the latest news between now and Sunday. For Daily Iowa TV, I'm Alara Bartlett. And I'm Austin Love. Have fun this weekend, Iowa City.